to. The number of COVID cases are predicted, as we know, to grow exponentially, especially as all these test kits become more widely available. Ken Molestina spoke to a local professor today who kind of specialize in tracking this kind of data with a focus on why it is so important to limit all this essential and non-essential movement. Regardless of what the number is, whether it's one and a half or 17, um, that factor gets multiplied uh, every uh, period of time that passes, and that's what leads to exponential growth. It's basic math illustrated here to give us all a clearer representation of how, in general terms, a virus could spread through contacts. UTA professor Dr. Christopher Cribbs' research focuses on the rate of virus spreads using mathematical models. He says it's important to understand how the projection of a curve works in these situations. What you see in any case is it, it always starts out with this exponential increase. And then eventually it tapers off. And the reason it tapers off is actually because you start running out of people to infect. In essence, he's talking about flattening the curve, which we've all heard about by now. He says by doing so, the pandemic may last longer, but the cases will be more manageable and our health care system will not be overwhelmed. That means um, the total number of people who get infected at the end of the outbreak will be lower and the people who do get infected will be spread out over time instead of all coming in one sudden rush. That's the best case scenario at this point, he says. He added, we won't know for sure how effective our current changes have been for at least another couple of weeks. Therein lies the projection as to how much longer this pattern of restricted movement, social distancing, and limited contact could last. I certainly think um, at a bare, bare minimum two to three months, um, but it could be six months. I'm Ken Molestina, CBS 11 News.